let's talk to Megan Kelly. She hosts the Megan Kelly Show podcast. And Megan, you came over to cover uh, Harry and Megan's royal wedding for NBC's morning show today. Uh, and that was a time when there was uh, universal, I'd say, love and admiration for the couple. But they say it all went downhill from there. And, you know, she has made some pretty explosive ac accusations and allegations, not just about the royal family, but about the impact that it had on them. Will she, will they get sympathy or criticism over in the States, which loves the royal family? What do they feel about the couple? I think over here it's breaking down by uh, party. The more conservative-leaning people are against them and the more liberal people are for them. And, uh, and against the monarchy. So it's sort of the same today as it was yesterday. But I'll tell you, just watching it myself, and I was one of the people on the streets rooting for them, delighted that this was happening, right? It was exciting. Um, she was an American. She's a person of color. It looked like the modernization of the British monarchy. The, the British people adored her. I saw them. I interviewed them. Um, but what I saw tonight was somebody who was totally unself-aware. I mean, completely unaware of how she sounded, right? Like, I... I wasn't planning on saying anything shocking, except for my husband's racist family almost drove me to suicidal thoughts while I was pregnant with my baby. Um, and by the way, I, I had no idea what the internet said about Harry. Nobody believes that. And I, I thought meeting the queen was gonna be just like meeting a celebrity in Los Angeles, like like meeting a Kris Jenner, right? Like nobody believes that. And then she goes on to say like, I'm not, I don't, I don't believe in any of the grandeur, you know, there's an article already up in the New York Post here in the States saying, this is the person who had Clooney and Oprah at her wedding, even though she didn't even know them, and then covered herself in blood diamonds from the Saudi prince. So like, spare us that you're not into any of the grandeur. And then while she's spinning this tale about how tough she had it in the castle, how lonely she was in the castle, um, she's, she's painting herself in sort of these adorations like, I, I'm, it was incredibly courageous of me to come forward about my depression. And I just love saving things. And it was like, it was just peppered with these compliments of herself while she was making these complaints that will be totally unrelatable to 99% of the people out there. Yeah, I, you know what, Megan? I couldn't have put that better myself. So, uh, but mainly because it's the level of disingenuousness. And Harry also, you know, to a point, I expected all this from Meghan Markle. I could almost have scripted what she was going to do. Mental health, race, all the hot button things were going to be played against the royal family. There'd be no names. They wouldn't name people on that. they just leave it hanging so we could look at all the royal family and the whole palace staff as a bunch of callous racists. And that's exactly what she did. And I expected all that. And I expected all the layers of hypocrisy. Prince Harry is the one that I'm staggered by. As his grandfather lies in hospital, aged 99, entering his third or fourth week now. Clearly been very seriously ill, had a heart procedure a few days ago. The, the Queen must be worried sick about her husband. Mm. And the Queen and Prince Philip have worked so hard for seven decades now to preserve the monarchy. And in two hours, Prince Harry has allowed his wife to trash everything that they stand for. I, I just don't get what he's thinking. Well, and meanwhile, her implication that somebody in the royal family objected to her having a baby of color could, I mean, right here on the speculation on Twitter is that it was that it was Prince Philip, right? So I don't know who it was, but while the guy's in the hospital, you might you might want to put like a corral around him and say, I can tell you it's not the suffering 99 year old. I don't something right to like throw the guy a bone. But the other thing about Harry Pierce is that he his biggest complaint and her biggest complaint was we were worried about the security. We, we, we were worried about the security of our son. Why would they take it away? Why wouldn't they make him a prince? By the way, I care nothing about titles at all, but why, why wasn't my son a damn prince? Um, okay, so we're worried about security. And then Harry's saying, all I had was my mother's inheritance. So I looked that up, it's about 15, 16 million dollars. So you're telling the American public, the British public right now, we're supposed to feel sorry for you because you couldn't find a way to pay for your own security when you haven't had to pay for a dime of your own life so far. The British taxpayers have paid for everything. Exactly. And okay. now you might have to pay for some All security. Right, but even, Megan, the refurb Megan. even the refurbishment. OK, Even Megan. the two and a half million pound refurbishment okay. of Frogmore Cottage was paid for by us. They eventually paid it back from their Netflix gazillion. But they meant 
mention in their interview that they were subject to death threats. And we know that even if, they, if Prince Harry took a step away from the royal family, by dint of his birth, he is always going to be To so hire your own security. If you're not going to do he's, royal he's duty... he's going to be at risk. If you're not going to do the royal you duty... Expect, because Sorry. you don't change your birth then, when you step away from the royal family. you're going to be commercial people, pay so for Meghan, it out of your own pocket. Is it not reasonable for them to expect to continue to be protected? Because I think a lot of people will think it is. Really? And, they and they're earning are... £100 million from Netflix. I mean, I, I wouldn't presume to speak for the, for the palace, right, and how the rules are. But I think as a grown adult, you know what the rules are. And when you are a multi-millionaire with all that dough in your pocket, you've never had to pay for anything your entire life, you can shell out a few dollars to protect your child if you're that worried about it. A lot of people have had death threats. I'm sorry to say it's a faction of modern life if you are a famous person. And they're going to have to deal with this. And so far, they seem to be very well ensconced in a very safe place here in California. But if you want your liberty, then you're going to have to pay for it. That's the way life works. Yeah, it's really I think it's, it's not so a difficult thing to work out. To, to a couple who were clearly at risk. All they were asking for was to be protected. Oh, please, you're buying into their ludicrously yeah, self-serving no, narratives, Susanna. I'm sorry. Well, you can right. describe They were it told as when they finally made their big, you can have when they finally made, for we're it. leaving Britain, we're leaving the royal family, we won't do any more duty. And they said, OK, well, in that case, I'm afraid the paid security that comes with the job of doing royal duty, that, I'm afraid, That's goes right. with the job. And at that point, they throw well, the toys yeah. out of the pram. So can I just say this? Here's the other thing that really irritated me about the whole thing. I understand they had problems. If, if, if there is a racist in the royal family saying stuff like that about their child, it's deeply upsetting. I get it. But nowhere in there did I hear any acknowledgement of the enormous privilege they had. Right? Some perspective saying, look, it wasn't a great experience. We chose to leave. That, was the way, that wasn't the way we wanted to live our lives. But we understand there's so much suffering in the world. We've seen it firsthand this past year in, our, in both of our countries. And we're good. We're grateful for the blessings we have. We're not here to complain. She Love compared, our family. Megan, the she compared. Meghan Markle actually Meghan Markle compared compared being trapped inside the palace uh, as to what people are going through in pandemic lockdown. She literally wanted people who are living on tower blocks in estates with four kids homeschooling. She wanted them to know, I know what that feeling's like. I've been in a palace with a bunch of servants. Yeah, she was very lonely in her palace. And then she compared herself to the Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid who married a prince and lost her voice. It's like, so it wasn't predictable at all to you that when you moved into the palace, someone else was going to control the press. My six-year-old daughter knew that before I went off to cover the royal wedding. Everyone knew that. Yeah, Megan, and Miss, if you I felt that somebody that you were working for didn't. was lying about you or mistreating you, isn't it reasonable to say that you felt unprotected and that you felt abandoned and that you, you know, when she says all she wanted to do was go out and have lunch with friends, she hadn't been out for four months. She literally properly. flew to New York for a $500,000 baby shower and flew back yes. on the Clooney jet. I don't and know how can't have anyone can friends. be prepared do me a for what it is like to be in that lunch with her situation. friends in New York. No, OK, so listen, but you guys know as well as I do, look, the press was vicious toward her. I get it, after they were lovely toward her. And the press well, can't well, turn Megan, Megan, hang I'm on, hang glad on. that you're hang on, that. Just, Before you finish that sentence, let me again just remind people of all the front pages of yes. the terrible British press... Around the wedding. ..around their engagement and then their wedding yes. later. Unified, yep. absolute ecstasy about That's the right. fact that Harry was marrying a biracial woman. Unified. That's right. So not I, I a word, not a word of dissent. This is what the British press actually published, not what's in their minds or what they read on social media. But she said that there was the a truth. change. That's in my the truth. Tone They've had the their truth. That's no, my no, truth. I, that's why I don't think you can say it's about race, because if it was about race, then they would have been brutal to her from the start. They were over the top in love with her. And then her behavior changed and their coverage changed. But look, this isn't all the, fa the fault of the royal family. She became a royal, she married a prince. The press is gonna cover you. I mean, even in my much lower station in life as a news anchor, the press is brutal. You get punched in the face rhetorically all the time and it's awful. And it's a fact of life you have to learn to deal with. It doesn't, it shouldn't drive you to that kind of depression, those kinds of, of self 
lamentations. And, and the fact that she became suicidal over the fact that the press was nasty, she was stuck in a castle, and there might have been a racist in the royal family is truly shocking. It's truly shocking. We don't know any names. Well, it's no, she says she went to the palace about her mental health and got rejected. Who was that person at the palace that rejected her? Uh, and what was her husband doing about all this? She says, Harry says there was a racist in the family spewing racist stuff about his baby. Who was that racist? Mm. You can't just spray gun people anonymously and then smear them all.